uh, my name is Guido Molinari. I'm the Managing Foreign Person Group. And it is my true pleasure today to have here at Unitize Silvia Tanasio. Silvia is the head of innovation at ABI, the Italian Banking Association. Welcome, Silvia. How are you today? Thank you. Thank you, Guido. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm great and excited to speak, speak about, about Punta, Punta Project. Project. Wonderful. Um, so why don't we start maybe uh, with you telling me what is the Italian Banking Association? Because I think it's important for the listener to understand the context for which the Punta Project came together. Sure, the Italian Banking Association is the association that uh, unify all the Italian banks. So we are we represent their interests and we advocate re their instances to regulators and to other uh, stakeholders regarding the uh, banking sector. Wonderful. And can you tell me, you know, what is Punta? You know, how, what is this project that you know? I know now it's already in production, but you know, it started in 2017 and you know can you give us a brief description of what has been doing First of all, Spunta is a reconciliation process based on bilateral account, a sort of Nostro and Vostro account. Uh, it's a process generally run by back offices, which aim to clear uh, every, every mismatch in a double entry bookkeeping. So it is about um, an exchange of information rather than uh, an exchange of value. And um, the operations uh, um, that and the information that we uh, the, that the banks exchange uh, requires to be confirmed before being a written account. As you uh, anticipate, we are working on this project since 2017, and the pro project has been promoted by uh, the ABI, so by the association, and coordinated by ABILAB, which is a center of research and innovation promoted by the ABI itself, a non-profit center for research and innovation. Great. And, um, you know, I know, Silvia, we have talked before that when you guys started the project in 2017, there were already a lot of enterprise, you know, projects around blockchain. So you felt that, you know, a lot of things had already been done. And you guys though, took a quite a different approach to, you know, putting Spunta together. Can you tell us a little bit about how your approach was different from other networks that were being built at the time? Yeah, I'm not sure I know the approach of other uh, networks or other projects. I can say what was our uh, aim and our uh, tentative during all this project. We start working with uh, 10 in the beginning and 14 and then 18 banks. And we always work together because our first concern was to keep the governance distributed. So we wanted the banks to decide everything. Uh, so we, um, we worked together with the IT department of the banks, the innovation department of the banks and the operation department of the banks. So we need to have um, the innovation and IT people uh, able to understand the Spunta process and the operational people a uh, able to understand blockchain and DLT and especially Corda. So we started with uh, uh, l some learning session and I can testify that it was easier to let understand the blockchain to operational people that uh, bring uh, innovation people through the uh, mindset of a so traditional and, and fundamental process as uh, the reconciliation is. Uh, another thing it was, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, in order to, to, to reach this goal, we developed the uh, user interface in parallel with the application. This was thanks to uh, our business network developer, uh, Entity Data Italy. And in, in this way, people from back offices was able to uh, to try and to see what we were uh, developing and to address the further uh, requirements, the further requests they could have regarding the software. That's fascinating. So basically, you guys want, uh, you know, you didn't the platform and try to go to the bank for them to adopt it. You want them to get their hands dirty and really be, you know, an active member in the development of the platform, which is, which is, which is something that, you know, I feel, um, you know, having talked to some of the members' banks of Punta is, uh, was very much yeah. appreciated by, by them and sort of un unusual compared to other type of networks that have been involved. Um, now, you mentioned, um, you know, governance as, you know, and the importance of a distributed governance process. Can you tell me a little bit about, you know, you, you guys have, you know, you set 10 banks to store, you grew the, the group to 18. 
And of course, there were banks of different sizes, right? you know, very large banks like Sao Paulo in this and smaller regional banks. How was the governance process structured? Did everybody have the same weight in the governance? Did you try to have a unanimous decisions? Like what were the key aspects of the governance process that you undertook? Uh, I think the main aspect was that we have in mind the same big picture and the same vision and result to, to achieve. So we were aligned from this point of view. As an uh, ho phalanx of hopeless, we have we use this metaphor came in from the ancient Greece and the ancient uh, Alexander the Great in, in Macedonia. So we tried to work together and to step together for all the, these those two years. Uh, in this way, we we tried to keep a uh, very focus on the uh, key important decision, and in this. Uh, in this area, we try to have the union, oh, sorry, unanimity of decisions, but it wasn't always possible. Uh, so we we voted a lot of times. We met. Uh, uh, we were lucky enough. There wasn't COVID nineteen at that time. We met every month for two years. You can imagine 50 to 60 people in the same meeting room every two months deciding everything, buttons, colors, criteria for the automatic matching, um, uh, kind of connectivity for the nodes, the, the platform and uh, the, the providers, everything. We decided together, even from the very beginning when we started with the request for proposal in order to select the system integrator that would have developed the application, we uh, made um, um, a selection board made of one component for each bank participating. And they had one vote each, exactly like Abilab has one vote. So we decided together, even the fundamentals of, of the project. And we shared also between the banks the cost of the initiative. Uh, as Abilab was already a consortium, uh, every bank paid the same. And we used this um, this argument also during the time in order to justify why every vote count every bank has one vote at the same at the same way. But we never had a, a, a face by face. Let me say a big divisions about about nothing. Basically, what you're saying, you know, because everybody shared the, the vision. Even the people that might have disagreed sometimes, they didn't leave the table, right? I mean, they, they, they stayed at the table, even, um, you know, again, maybe some of their preferences were not reflecting the decision. So, um, you know, I know, and you already mentioned, you know, the selection process for the integrator ended up being entity data. Uh, and I know that, you know, in terms of the platform, you chose to develop on Corda by our free. Can you tell us why Corda was chosen? You know, I know you had considered other options, but why, why did you go with, with their platform? Yes, first of all, we uh, compared a centralized solution to a decentralized solutions. And we decided to go through a decentralized solution because uh, uh, with another uh, way, with a uh, traditionally, let me say, uh, centralized solution, we would have been uh, necessary to define someone who would have managed all this information, who would have received all those informations re regarding the balance of the different accounts, uh, the movements of every bank, the information that are related to each movement in the nodes, etc. So it wasn't so easy to uh, identify uh, a single actor that could have run the, the centralized solution. And uh, the second point was that with a centralized solution, probably it would have happened that every single bank would have keep its own system to reconcile information and just periodically send information to the centralized DB. And instead, we wanted to transform the process, to reshape the process in order to uh, include some key component of the distributed paradigm. And this was made possible with the distributed solution. Then we decided between the permissionless and the permissioned, but as we have bank, we need to have to, to know to who we are sending information. And, and then we compared the solution that at that time, you can imagine Corda was, I think, in the 0 0.9 version open source. 
uh, Hyperledger Fabric was at 1.0 or something like this. So that was the era in, in DLT world. And uh, we decided for Corda after uh, sending a, a, an unforgettable uh, list of 30 questions uh, that we had made for uh, for uh, in order to under, better understand the possibility and the availability uh, uh, and the technical uh, solution for of every platform and especially Corda was uh, was uh, very um, adapted to um, uh, was very uh, easy in Corda to uh, set up the bilateral channels so it, it was quite perfect to replicate the bilateral accounts. And it, uh, another, quest, uh, another point was that it was very, uh, it was always possible to keep a constant dialogue with them. There were an, uh, a company and uh, with that company, I mean our three, we worked together during those two years. Mm -hmm. Very clear. And, and uh, Silvia, just to, to, to point out, you know, one of the aspects that you brought up, you know, the centralized, centralized solution versus decentralized I know that you guys really wanted to bring a standardized solution that every bank would have. Them. And you know, you told me that um, the, the the system that was in place for Spunta was based on a 1979 agreement, and every bank had sort of developed their their own version of it, right? So, as any centralized solution would have sort of not solved that issue that you know now you have managed to solve, which is in every bank the operator sees the same system. And interacts in the same way, you know, independent of where they are. So I thought that was a, a great, you know, feature of, of choosing this edition for a solution like you guys did. Um, so, um, you know, I know that, you know, one of the um, key successes of, of, of your platform, something that we have not seen in many other countries, are able after, you know, the, the time of experimentation with the 18 banks to mandate the solution to, you know, the remaining of the banking sector, right? In Italy, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's about 200 banks. So you had, you know, 18 in the, in the sort of the trial, and then another 180, you know, long tail banks that basically were mandated to, to, to implement. Can you tell me a little bit about how do you guys achieve, you know, this huge success of having the mandate? And, you know, how did these other 180 banks react to having a, new technology like blockchain being mandated to them, even if that, you know, they're not, and on top of it, they're not participating in the experiment. Yeah, you know, Italy is quite complicated. So in our uh, special, uh, particular way of life, this is not really mandatory, but it's voluntary mandating. And what, what would I mean with this strange expression? Uh, we have an interbank agreement, which is voluntary for the banks. They decide if, uh, um, if uh, adhere to the agreement or not. If they adhere to the agreement, they had to accept every part of this agreement. This means also the spunta. So this process is not ruled by uh, the central bank or any uh, law of the state or something like this, but it's ruled by an, an, um, an agreement, an interbank agreement. So we were able to issue the new version of this interbank agreement that switches the banking sector from tapes to distributed ledger without selecting um, a specific technology, of course, because we are talking about rules, so there has to be technology neutral, of course, but we supported and we provide the regulatory framework in some way to move to this result. And regarding the long tail of banks, of course, not everyone is happy when something like this uh, arises in their uh, in their plan, in their budgets, etc. But I think they understood that we want tr we was trying to uh, to support the transition of the entire sector into this new world, not only to uh, prepare and to transform the spunta, but especially to habilitate the Italian banks to run and to develop furthermore. Uh, use cases based on DLT. Mm -hmm. So you on the new rails, right? It's sort of a systemic change to DLT from from what what, what was there before. Um, so um, you know, I know that you know we've talked before, and you mentioned to me that education was a very important part of sort of explaining to you not know, the initial eighteen banks, but then you know all the other banks part 
of, of now of Spunta today, um, uh, you know, what Spunta is and, you know, what are the advantages. And also, you know, you, all, you also mentioned to me that even auditors and sort of third parties, uh, you know, can you tell me a little bit like about the educational initiative that you guys have done and why do you think education is so important? These technologies absolutely disruptive and especially from a bank's point of view it is changing the way we consider um, functions and controls and central subjects we are used to uh, to participate in order to manage our own process so one of the main idea of this project was to uh, experiment in the real life what this technology uh, mean exactly and, and in which way it can transform the way we used to see to, to, to look at the banking process. So uh, sometimes it was not so easy to, for example, to measure the results of this project because some characteristic was um, uh, at a qualitative level, not at a quantitative level. And so we needed to, to change our mindset, to change the mindset of the people around the table, to change the mindset of the one who are required to decide about this project. So this was a, a very good um, exercise, I think, to be prepared for what's going next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's interesting, you know, and, and I know, you know, we, we, we talked about it. Um, yeah. You mentioned, of course, you know, many things were qualitative, but there have been, you know, very tangible quantitative results of Spunta to date. Can you tell us a bit about, you know, transaction to date, how many banks have been in the network? I know you guys have gone through waves of deployment this year, how that is going and, you know, in general, yeah, what are, what are the achievements of the project so far? Yeah, this, uh, the migration started in March 1st with the first 32 banks. And I'm particularly proud, especially as an Italian, that we set this date, uh, I think, in March 2019. And we were so punctual. We didn't have one single day of, of delay. Uh, the second wave went, uh, goes to production in my, May 1st. So uh, we arrived at 55 banks. And now, uh, a few days ago on July 1st, the furthermore 20 banks are going in production and more are, are, are coming and are arriving to the third and last wave because by October 1st, uh, the old process will be dismissed and the old rules will be uh, cancelled. So it's, this is the way in which we need to, to go into production. Uh, so every morning, the operators of back offices uh, of the first 55 banks uh, goes to the node, uh, get access to the node and start uh, working their, their movements and their operations. Uh, this means uh, uh, stress for, from a performance point of view. We are uploading around uh, 7 million movements per month and this means a lot of transactions. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you told me that, you know, uh, bef you know, there were some people that might have been skeptical about, you know, what if, you know, we implement a new system and it doesn't work. So let's keep also running the old system. But can you tell me why that ultimately it's, it's not going to be needed? Yeah, the previous process was run on a monthly basis. And uh, on the 20th of the following month, the banks received the, the data flow of the previous month. So around 50 days after the first movement of the data flow. So they suggested to keep uh, the, the old system to, to transmit the information and the movements. But yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? As long as we arrive to the 20th of the following month, we have already um, uh, uploaded and matched uh, almost two months of data. So it was really a different metronome, a different um, time frame, you know, that we are experimenting in, in the DLT world respect to the, to the old one, which is not up to date already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. So you went from, you know, 50 days to almost immediate. I think you ended up choosing T plus three. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. That's, that's a fascinating change. 
um, you know, I know we're, you know, almost uh, up with the time, but, you know, I know, you know, you, you have been, you know, really a key piece of this whole project, um, you know, acting really as, quote unquote, a project manager for, for, for Spoonta and, you know, bringing, as you mentioned, you know, 40 people from different banks together month after month. I know there are, you know, project managers out there trying to, you know, push their networks ahead, notwithstanding all the difficulties of, you know, having all of these different stakeholders with different opinions at the table. What are your recommendations for, you know, people that, you know, are in sort of the position you were in, you know, in 2017, 18 and 19, bringing the, in the project to fruition? Yeah. The first suggestion is to buy a lot of coffee in advance because you will need it. Uh, but I, I didn't have su such a key role. The key role was really, really uh, from the group of the banks that worked with us. They were able to make my work in their banks because they were discussing, of course, with several internal different departments um, and they keep the, the, the vision and the idea of the DLT and of the Spunta in their organization. My role was just to balancing some different requirements, some different ideas, some different needs, and to be pushed and pulled uh, here and there, you know, to, to, to try to balance everything. Um, it was really important to maintain uh, a time, uh, 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 a team, uh, a spirit of team during all the time. So everyone was involved. Everyone was part of the change. Mm -hmm. People, you know, again, and you, you mentioned to me this before. People knew why the decision were made, and so sort of there were there were no surprises in a way. Like it was like you know everybody was involved. Um, so um, you know now. You know, you have banks already on the network. By the end, by October 1st, you know, networks cannot be live for all Italian banks. You cannot, you know, all the, the previous agreement is going to be archived. Uh, what is next, right? You know, now you have the rails in place. You know, you have a functioning DLT system with the entire banking sector on it. Uh, I know there have been, you know, many discussions, you know, what, what do we do next? You know, what, what wag wagons do we put on this rail system? So can you tell us a bit about, you know, what is the future of, of Spunta, both in Italy and also I know that you guys have thought about, you know, in, international Spunta, right? Yeah. Because the Italian banks, of course, operate also with, with other European and international banks. Yes, of course, the main idea is to uh, enlarge the scope of the Spunta between other, other kind of accounts that exist in the, in the banking sector in, uh, in Italy or involving also uh, international banks. And in, from this perspective, we will keep uh, uh, the, our original spirit. So the idea is not to, uh, is not to uh, propose something ready to be, uh, to be implemented, but to build together with full transparency. It was a, another key part of, uh, of our project. If something good happens or if something not good happens, we, we tell it to, to the bank. So we, we need to decide to design the new application together. And of course, there are other interesting projects that can be, uh, can reuse the investments that Italian banks have already made. Uh, I hope that the banks itself will, uh, will bring the new, uh, the new use case. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I know, you know, the, the, the system has been very focused at back office. Do you foresee that eventually this is going to have an impact on the front office? So like banks versus their customers? Of course, of course. Um, I think that, for example, uh, KYC process could benefit so much of this of this technology. And there are also a lot of um, initiatives that are reshaping our world out there. For example, I, I'm thinking about the central bank digital currency. And uh, this is a matter that the central bank are managing. The central bank are, are deciding and designing uh, exactly what they think is it could be the best but um, if they want and if they are interested of course the italian banks wants to be part of this change and can support in testing and verifying and uh, bringing our experience in this uh, in this area wonderful well silvia it was truly a pleasure to have you with us here at unitize 
Um, and congratulations on the amazing success you guys have had on Spunta. And, you know, good luck with the remaining rollout. I'm sure it's going <laughs> to be good by keeping fingers crossed. Sure. Uh, and, you know, we're hoping, hoping to have you again here next year and telling us about the next steps the Spunta has taken by then. It will be my pleasure. Thank you, Guido. Thank you so much. Thank you, Silvia.